Good evening. Good evening. We welcome you today on our live session. And today we have a special guest, Leah. She was cycling alone to North Cape. So we are very interested about your experience, how she there, because she's uh, very young. And uh, we are awaiting her when she come and uh, then we can ask all our questions. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Can you dare to go by bike to... Um, I checked our Instagram uh, today, but she cycled quite a lot every day. So it's really, really impressive what she, what she did. And, um, and alone, sometimes bad roads, sometimes seen a bridge was not uh, operational. So they had to cycle more to reach the uh, destination for sleeping. So it's quite exciting to do that all by yourself. Yeah, I believe she did uh, cycled more kilometers of the day than we uh, with <laughs> by car. We drove by Pug, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know somebody else, um, one uh, Russian guy, He's uh, he lived in America and he's now running in, uh, around the world. So maybe, and, and he is already in, in St. Petersburg. So he he was so quickly then that we couldn't meet each other in Norway because he was more quickly. Uh, Leah, where are you? We are waiting. He's not here. Hello, hello. Sainte, Sainte. <laughs> Can you hear us? It's a uh, good sound and um, picture. Is everything okay? Can you tell us? So it's... Um, Always uh, afraid if it's uh, if it's good, um, is it if it's everything okay? Because uh, you speak in a uh, half hour and after it you you see that it's nothing worked. So there is Leah. Leah, hello. Hello. So come here to us. Oh yeah, I see it. We're connecting. <laughs> Hi! Hello. Hello! Hello! How are you? Good! <laughs> Good! Good to see yeah. you! Yeah, you too! <laughs> Thank you for inviting me! You're welcome! Yeah, welcome! We are very happy that we finally did it because when we met girls uh, on the in uh, in Norway, it was mm. Norway? Yeah, it was yeah, Norway. It was Norway. <laughs> they told about you. They told the young girl she's cycling alone, and we so thought it's very interesting mm, to impressive. speak with you. Yeah. Te yeah. Tell first about you before we go to ask uh, anything. You tell about yourself. Oh uh, well, <laughs> uh, I'm Leah. Um, I'm a cyclist from Germany, and uh, just yeah, well. A few months ago, uh, I cycled from Germany uh, to Nordkap. From south of uh, Germany. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. Near Nuremberg. Yeah. So pretty much south of Germany, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I uh, had a lot of adventures, met a lot of nice people, and I uh, think uh, <laughs> have some stories that I can tell. Mm -hmm. Yes, we want to hear. <laughs> How you how you dare it? Did you cycled? Um, did you did it before, or it's first experience in your life? Well, I well the bike for me is my main mean of transportation. So I get around town, and mm -hmm. I know if it had to do some shopping or something, or um, I always went to buy um, to school by bike, but I never did such a long tour before. Yeah, it's uh, 5,000 kilometers. Yeah, that's true. And I believe before the furthest I've ever biked was something like 45 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty much my first experience uh, doing such a long bike trip. Wow, 45? <laughs> and you told that uh, you was cycling 100 kilometers a day. Yeah, <laughs> how you can uh, rise it so well in if you don't have experience. So um, I think it's. I mean, my it was. I was pretty fit. I would say I uh, went to the gym and everything before, so I did kind of a lot of 
sports and was very active. Um, but I also first started out with something like 85, 90 kilometers. And then in the end, it was like 100 or 110. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you bike every day, so you get better eventually. Yeah, yeah. So I did not start with 100 kilometers a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's just learning by doing, I guess. <laughs> and did you have some resting days in between? Yeah, I made sure that I had at least like one rest day a week. Mm -hmm. So every other week I had one rest day and I made sure to plan those so that I could um, get to know some bigger cities. Mm -hmm. And then I just walked around the cities or also went to some museums and had more of a cultural experience oh, on nice. those days. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And by the way, I see that people come and, and uh, we welcome you all and you we welcome you to write your questions to to us or for Lea. So um we we are open for um, answering it, but uh, I go further with my list because uh, we have uh, a lot of questions to you. Uh, for me it's interesting how you dare to do it. I don't know, it just, uh, I had this plan to do a bike trip since, I don't know, three years ago, maybe. And, um, and you was 15. Yeah, I, I believe so. I remember that my mom told me a story um, about one of her friends. And the son wanted to do a bike trip, but because of different reasons, it didn't work out. But um, that gave me the inspiration to say, like, oh, yeah, sounds kind of fun. And then I had this idea. Um, but first, I only wanted um, to bike through uh, Germany and Denmark. And then only later, when I did more research, I uh, found out that you could also maybe just bike to Nordkap. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. I, I just said, like, yeah, that's Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I just did it then, basically. <laughs> I know I wasn't really afraid of anything. I just thought it would be kind of a nice experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, your parents, how they dare to let you go? I mean, of course, they were a bit afraid, especially because I'm traveling, I was traveling on my own. Um, but and they, of course, told me that they were a bit afraid. I mean, I'm also 18, so they couldn't really stop me, but they also wouldn't have really stopped me. They would say, like, yeah, be careful and everything, but they would still let me go, um, which I think is really good. This way. But of course, especially my mom was a bit afraid at first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you travel to the most safe part of Europe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's true. I mean, I stayed in Europe, and those countries, like everything that could have happened to me there, could also have happened to me at home. Mm -hmm. So it would have been different. I also, for me personally, if I would have traveled to say another country. Mm -hmm. So, because I mean, those countries are pretty safe, I would say. Yeah. Where did you sleep? Uh, I I was expected that you were sleeping always in a tent, but we saw that it was something different. Diff yeah, <laughs> I had a lot of different places where I slept. At first, uh, I booked kind of hostels to stay at. Um, then, of course, in Sweden, I also slept in my tent, um, and just in the nature, somewhere out there in the woods. And then, actually, um, I also had, uh, especially in Denmark, those shelters, so just some really basic wooden constructions, mm -hmm. so you don't get wet in them, but you have nothing as effect of those construction with like basically three walls mm -hmm. and yeah that's it in Denmark <laughs> yeah they are pretty pretty popular there and they're also really good if you're lucky you get a place where you can get water <clears throat> you always have a fireplace mm -hmm. which 
we rarely used because it was like raining like crazy <laughs> when it was in Denmark. But I imagine it would be really nice if it wouldn't have been that wet. <laughs> and um, yeah, in the middle of Sweden, I think it was, I started um, to think like, yeah, maybe I will just ask some people if they have space for me. Mm-hmm. And then I uh, started knocking on doors and mm-hmm. asking if, they have some place and that works so well. Even for free, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's work. And we did it too. Only not, and then, then, we don't dare I, to do knocking. I only <laughs> went to Facebook group um, of Russian mm-hmm. people and I asked, I asked about museums or something like it and people began to invite us. So it's, yeah. it's happened. It's great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I also, in bigger cities, I use things like, for example, couch surfing or similar mm-hmm. um, things. Um, but yeah, out there, just I always uh, <laughs> looked on Google Maps and lo- used the satellite function to, to see how many houses were there. Because <laughs> in the north, you know, you can't really trust street views because they basically label a town when it's just a few houses mm. there <laughs> so you would expect something like Morris but I made sure that I had I don't know at least 10 houses there so yeah. I had some options because a lot of them were summer houses mm. so there were no people there because it was autumn by then um, but I always was lucky and found someone and I think that was the best decision I made on the journey because I met so many nice people mm. and it was so awesome to get to know their story and just to get to know the local. That was really great. I think that it was the reason why uh, she stops to write something on Instagram <laughs> because in the beginning... Yeah, was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it was difficult because I, of course I, I had no VLAN or Wi-Fi or something and then also... When I met people, I started talking with them, and then it, it was so late, and then I was tired of my day, like, biking 100 kilometers, and I thought, like, I will do it tomorrow, mm-hmm. and then the day after, and then good more and more, and I, I thought, like, oh, gosh, I have to write, like, post for, like, seven days, and I thought, like, okay, I will just stop, and then I did some stories, and tried to keep those up, but also then, I, I did that at times where I had Wi-Fi, so it some random gas station or something mm-hmm. but then then it took me so much time and it was a bit difficult because i always wanted to arrive at the place where i wanted to go maybe like half past four or five if i wanted to knock at doors because i thought it would be easier to knock on those doors when it would still be kind of bright and not mm-hmm. in the middle of the night <laughs> and because i don't know how people would have reacted <laughs> if I came there in the middle of the night saying like, hey! Not America, but they have often too. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that's, then I thought like, yeah, I will just use the time to maybe relax, eat something and not do this Instagram stuff. And yeah. Maybe someday <laughs> I will write a remaining post, but I'm not sure if I will do that. We recognize this problem mm-hmm. too. We were so like crazy about writing, filming, and the posting. And uh, if you meet people, you can't do it. This mm-hmm. because you you want to be with people, and then only you you have a lot of information now. You have to edit about when because you want to go further. <laughs> Mm. So it's so, it was so really family for mm. us. Yeah, but I think it, it actually, I mean, it's the experience. You do the, that journey in traveling for yourself, not to post on Instagram or something. And so I think it's like, I also took a lot of pictures and videos and everything, which I think is good because now I have them and I can do something with mm. them if I want to, but I don't have to. Because the most important in that moment were that, like, I experienced that meeting people, talking to them, looking at all the landscape, nature, everything, and not stressing about posting something. And I think that was good that I realized that kind of early and didn't waste my time doing something where I could do 
maybe more interesting things than that. Mm-hmm. How long it took for you? Because uh, you began in the autumn, you start? Uh, I <laughs> I originally started on the 19th of July. Uh, I had uh, several bigger breaks. <laughs> I had to get back home for two weeks at some time. And then uh, another time when I uh, lost my ID, um, I had to go uh, to Stockholm. So I had to take another week, it was, um, because I had to go to the embassy. (laughs) Um, So I think from uh, my hometown up to Nordcap, it took me like 51 days Mm. when I don't include those bigger breaks no. and then I <clears throat> went back for us as well <laughs> yeah. Nice. yeah it's nice mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Roger's first time in life session <laughs> so he's a little bit shy <laughs> and uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I give you space <laughs> and <laughs> no I, I, it's very interesting for, for, for me what did you learn in the, in in this travel? What was opening for you? I think the biggest thing is that you don't have to stress about anything <laughs> because everything will kind of work out eventually. Ex- at least that was my experience. So every time I was worrying like, oh my gosh, where am I going to sleep tonight or something? In the beginning, where I started knocking, I was like, oh my gosh, will I find something? Where will I sleep? What will happen? And um, But I eventually learned that you will always find someone or some place. And even if it doesn't work out, I still had my tent. I always had a backup solution. So I always mm-hmm. brought my tent with me and could just go to the nearest forest or something and set it up there. So I was never like out of options. Um, but also like, I wouldn't have needed the tent really. Well, there was one time where I really didn't find anything, but there was. It was good that I had my tent. But I think the biggest thing is like don't stress so much about anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it was uh, for us the same. Yeah, yeah, that's a good lesson to learn. Yeah, you have to learn it as well. Yeah. Sometimes you try to find a place for sleeping and the uh, stress. No, they can't fight. It's impossible. It's no free parking. And uh, and you begin to tell already every night, all these months, months we can find it. So today it will happen again. It will be fine. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Still the same. And uh, uh, is something changed in you? Yeah. I think I think I'm a different person. I mean, I was away from home for I think three months or something. I was just out there in the world doing something. I think I became a lot more confident and also a lot more relaxed. And I, that's also what some friends that I met right after I came back home said to me: "Like you seem so relaxed. Like it seemed like nothing could bother you at all." Um, that's of course not the case, <laughs> but uh, I think it's still something that improved a lot. And you're working now, you're not studying yet. No, I'm not studying yet. Uh, I'm working, um, and in summer I will start studying. You're still 18, or yeah, <laughs> I'm still 18. <laughs> what do you want to study? Uh, I will, I Still don't know where I will go to study, but I will study to become a physiotherapist. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. 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 But um, people who are watching us, do you have any questions to Leah? Oh, by the way, are your parents uh, fans of uh, Star Wars? <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, no. I have a friend that's a big fan. That's <laughs> what I was thinking about. <laughs> Really? Why? One of the main characters' names, uh, her name is Lily. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> She's asking why. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know where the name came from, but uh, definitely not from Star Wars. <laughs> That's for, for sure, sure, yeah. He's a big fan, so... <laughs> yeah, okay, I see. <laughs> you already 
said some of those things, but how often did you have to diverse from your main plan or did it not was that much? You said that you lost your ID, so you had to yeah. spend more time in places, but was the road you planned really the road you also took? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Um, in Denmark, I changed it a lot um, because I met uh, two other cyclists um, mm -hmm. that I met up with uh, several times. Um, and then also um, kind of in the north of Sweden, I also changed it because, um, yeah, the, I just took a different uh, way that was not that hilly and uh, where I could be a bit faster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but basically I took the route that I planned. I didn't really plan everything. I just had a basic idea of mm -hmm. where I wanted to go. And then I planned like from day to day, basically. So in the evening, I would look at my map and be like, okay, yeah, you could go there and then there. And yeah, that's, yeah. But I couldn't, too much couldn't go wrong because mm -hmm. it didn't have that much of a plan. <laughs> I only have um, to go north. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was only just always go north. Yeah, yeah. That was the only thing that I had to do. Yeah. And I mean, in the north, you only have like one street, and that's it. Mm. So <laughs> you don't really have options there. You just have to take what you get, and yeah, that's it. Did you cook uh, on fire on your stops, or where did you eat? Yeah, I had a little like uh, camping stove thing with gas where I cook, um, and. At some places where I stayed, I also uh, people invited me for dinner, mm. but uh, mostly I cooked on my little stove. <laughs> you know, it is funny you told the people invite. I am uh, on my Russian account. Account. I had an interview with a girl. She was hitchhiking in mm -hmm. Asia and uh, without money, without any money. And I asked her how how, how it's possible. And uh, then I thought, okay, but maybe it's a good way to lose kilos because uh, you don't eat. And she told, no way. I'm in Asia. Everybody want to f f feed you. <laughs> so it, well, I had no chance to lose kilos. So it was fun. And you tell that the uh, people invited you too. Yeah. It's yeah, uh, they did. Amazing. Yeah, it really is. Uh, I also, I mean, people invited me and then sometimes also I just... Um, asked if I could use their stove to save mm. some of my gas yeah, yeah. Um, and they were happy to help me mostly yeah. Nice. so yeah <laughs> from also a little bit of question from our own experience travelers always bring too much stuff with them and uh, did you brought too much stuff with you or did you still miss some stuff and you had to buy it on the road of course, I brought too much stuff. <laughs> I think everyone does that. Um, but I also had a few things uh, that I didn't pack that I needed. Uh, for example, like really warm winter gloves for your hands. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that. And I quickly, <laughs> quickly knew that, okay, yeah, I, I need to buy those. Either yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I think. Other than that, I mean, I sorted out some stuff and sent back home because everything that you have with you, you have to, yeah, carry with you, you know. And mm. with a bike, it's like, yeah, it's good if you save some yeah, kilos, yeah. even grams. You have four <laughs> bags uh, on your bicycle. Yeah, yeah, four bags, two in the front, two in the back. And it's it was looking like a, it was not mountain bike. It was. It's mm, yeah. Travel bike, oh. travel, travel bike. Okay. Thing. It's made for traveling, basically. Um, to have some specific things that yeah, it have to be <laughs> stable. Yeah, strong, strong. Yeah, yeah, especially well, the things where you clip on the bags. They have to be kind of really strong because yeah. if the bags are heavy, mm -hmm. <laughs> they have to hold it. Um, but the bike was really good. I was really happy with the bike. Um, I didn't have one flat tire at all. No, so, uh, that was really what? good. Yeah, like a bump. Oh, oh, that's impressive. Me too. Yeah. 
You have a crowd or something different. <laughs> yes, it's always good. Nothing yeah. happens. That's really impressive. Yes. How, how many kilos did you put on your bike? Do you know that? Uh, gosh, uh, I think it was 30 or something. Okay. But I, I mean, it was way too much. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would bring a lot less if I would do that again. Yeah, um, and uh, we we understood that you had and the laptop and the uh, camera. Yeah, everything so big and uh, actually I don't think that you used it a lot. Uh, actually, I mean the laptop's the biggest thing that I wouldn't bring again, mm -hmm. but I did use it kind of a lot because I took so many pictures that I um had to. I, I couldn't store them on my phone. Yes. It was just too much. And so I actually used that a lot uh, to just transfer those. Uh, I still have to come up for a solution for that because I don't want to bring the laptop again, mm. but I don't know what to do with that. Um, but there's the same thing. I, I think if I would just ask people if I could use a computer to transfer my uh, pictures to, mm. I don't know, my phone or something else, I think that would be possible to do. So you don't need that. No. no. A friend of mine did that once uh, with a computer uh, from somebody else, and back home the, his own computer was full of a virus. So be careful with that. You, yeah, you only bring photos home with also viruses. That's the biggest problem, yeah. I think, yeah. Especially <laughs> when you are going outside Europe, because um, a lot of problems with computers can appear. But you have also yeah. other solutions. You have uh, devices where you can put in uh, a memory card of your camera and it copies yeah. automatically everything to, uh, to a stick. So you have, uh, have a yeah. backup. Mm. Yeah, I think that's also a good solution. Yeah, a laptop quite big, yeah. I ran out with my question. Do you have some questions? And uh, maybe somebody else has uh, questions. Uh, you can write it. So we can uh, see it, but I don't see questions. Maybe you have questions for us. Yeah. I mean, how come that you went to North Cap? Or we, to Norway? Oh. Yeah. We haven't. Uh... Not to North Cap. Oh, you <laughs> Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Oh, then you have to do that. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's our planning when we go to Russia via Murmansk. Then we mm -hmm. go on the uh, west... Uh, uh, coast? coast? Yeah how it's called the coast it goes know. from Norway yeah. 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 and then we go to Murmansk to Russia yeah. via, via yeah. North Cape yes it's our planning yeah. but this time it was test drive ah okay so you just had your test drive yeah we did a test drive of six weeks but it uh, turned out to be become four months and uh, <laughs> oh. it was a really successful uh, test drive no, no, what stuff we can leave at home that we don't need. And uh, yeah. the stuff we did need, we had to buy on the way because we didn't have to with us. And, so. Yeah, and because it was too cold and we, in planning was that we come back in, in uh, September. So we had a lot of summer clothes, shirts and mm. dresses, sandalias. <laughs> we didn't need, did need them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh. Yeah. We only had some good weather in, in, in Denmark and Sweden, and after that it became too, too cold. Mm -hmm. No way. So where did you go then? Denmark, Sweden? Uh, yeah, and then else? from Sweden to oh, Stockholm right. to, over to Oslo, and then really mm -hmm. slowly back uh, to Denmark again. And also we had, we had a cheap heater in our camper, and that broke down. So sometimes oh. middle in the night it was just two, three degrees inside our camper. Mm -hmm. So we were wearing a lot of blankets, a lot of clothes, three, four pairs of socks to keep oh, a little bit warm. Yeah. And try to work too. And uh, we washed uh, in, um, in the sea and uh, in the rivers for take shower. <laughs> and it was uh, 80 degrees when we uh, were cleaning up. <laughs> yeah. But I, wow. I miss it. I miss now because we have now shower. We are now by uh, mother-in-law, but I miss this, uh, this uh, water. Question. Yes, the question. question. Hey, I Marika, I believe it's uh, your friend. <laughs> Leah, can you tell us something about your diary? I will answer the question soon, but I just wanted to say something. Um, because you said you missed uh, 
your camper now and your camper life. I actually, when I came back home, I now sleep on the floor. I just have a mattress. <laughs> and I think that's also because I've always kind of slept on the floor and it was so comfortable. I was sleeping in my bed. And then I decided um, to just rearrange my whole room. Mm. And I said, like, I don't want to have the bed anymore. And then the first night sleeping on the floor, it was the best night ever again at home. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I can see why you miss the life. Yes, and we yeah. miss our mattress too, because uh, the bed, what we use now, it's it's normal bed, but our mattress in, in a camper is even better <laughs> than what we have now. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. real nice. It's maybe yeah. smaller, it's one meter forty, but it's uh, it's comfortable mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah it, it was nice but we we need to fix a lot of uh, things in the car um, mm. we found out because it's very moisty yeah mm. and we have to um, to do something with it and um, because it's ve ve very dirty now we have to clean everything and repair and the and the dynamo was broken and a, a lot of things and i have no uh, license anymore <laughs> oh yeah because it's, uh, i i need to yeah. make new, new one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot and uh, what about your diary it's a day yeah i i wrote a diary like every day uh, i wrote something down That's actually what I did, except of like one or two days. <laughs> I only missed one or two days, but okay. uh, that's actually something I decided uh, to do beforehand. I'm, I I always hand. write a diary, yeah, by hand, mm -hmm. um, and I just wrote down like everything I did in the day, or some special things or special people I met, um, and uh, I started. <laughs> I still didn't. Uh, finish it but I started uh, to write down everything like really detailed um, on my laptop now mm -hmm. from every day and special things and things I learned it's supposed to one day become kind of a book that I want to print for myself and have mm -hmm. as a kind of bigger diary um, but it's still a lot of work mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I'm not idea. nearly finished with that um, yeah. But I plan to do that because I think um, it will be a good thing for me um, to reflect on my whole journey. And then also, maybe, I don't know, in like 10 years, I find the book again and think like, oh, maybe it's just read it and can, yeah, in my mind, go back to those situations and uh, see where I am yeah. in 10 years. You never know. And I think it's good to have uh, something that, that you can look at. Do you have yeah. some planning to go travel again or now only study? Oh. I do want to go traveling again. Um, I want to do uh, some more bike tours. Um, I think some smaller ones next year before I'm going to start studying. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you, you never know. Uh, but I want to go study now. It's a big goal that I do that um, because it's something that I'm been interested in for a long time now and um, it feels good to do it now because I did the, the traveling and now I feel like I can have a few years of staying at one place um, but I, I still want to move somewhere so <clears throat> move out from home um, so I will be at a new place um, but uh, stay there for longer and we'll get to know a new place uh, for some years and then When I'm finished, we will see what happens. Mm. Maybe I will do a bigger trip again. Yeah. yeah, we want to travel further too. Actually, um, we decided uh, stop with, uh, with this life here and uh, quit job and go travel for whole life. Only because of our test drive, we understood that uh, we have to do it slowly, not so quickly. Because when you do it so quickly and you try to work and um, etc., you you're really stressed. And this is this is not our goal. Our goal is to to become better, to relax. What you found yeah. already? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's important. <clears throat> oh God. But <clears throat> well, I think that's the thing everyone has to learn when traveling. You at one time you will just 
go too fast and then realize, okay, maybe I have to go slower. I mean, if it's your goal to go fast, it's definitely not a problem. Like mm -hmm. everyone has a different pace at what they like to travel, but uh, I think to take it a bit slower and more relaxed is definitely a good thing. Yeah. And I have to ask one question because I'm from the Netherlands. Which country did have the best uh, bicycle lanes? Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> I only biked through Germany, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and Norway. Mm -hmm. um, but Denmark was definitely very good, mm -hmm. I have to say. Like, I really like that. And I also plan to go back to Denmark with a friend for a bike trip, maybe a week mm -hmm. or two. We are planning that uh, because I thought Denmark was, like, really great. Mm. Um, yeah, we have so, yeah. bicycles with us with our car, mm. and we drove also in Denmark, Sweden, Norway. And the bicycle lanes were really well. And then we drove in Germany and uh, in Hamburg, and we didn't like the bicycle lanes in Hamburg. They were no. really narrow and uh, close to the cars. Yeah, not uh, we were not used to that from big cities. <laughs> mm. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I also plan to do a bike trip to the Netherlands, so we will see where. Right? There. Yeah, I believe compare. it's really good there. Yeah. Yes. Um, Actually, even the roads for cars, are, I believe they are, they are better <laughs> in the world. <laughs> because it's really, yeah. really glass, so smooth. Yeah, really. And then uh, we have uh, more questions for you. What is the worst place you ever slept during your travel? I believe Marika knows something. Worst. <laughs> uh, place uh, that's difficult it's really difficult i don't know let me think maybe you uh, in the tent during the rain yeah there there was <laughs> oh gosh it's actually i slept one night at nord cup <laughs> and there was really a terrible terrible night um i mean the place was awesome um the problem was um before that uh i did a hike And I got lost on that hike. I didn't know my way. And I went off the path. It's just middle of the nature. Nobody was there. It was uh, sunset. It was getting dark. And I uh, had to go, well, through a lot of uh, very wet places. <laughs> it was all wet. Uh, I fell on my knees, so my knee hurt. Oh. And I was just cold, like really cold, really wet. When I got back and uh, I <laughs> managed to knock over my pot when I cooked, so I didn't have any warm food. Oh. Uh, and then it got really, really windy at night and it was super cold. I believe it was in the night something like zero or one degrees mm. and I already was wet and cold. So mm. the situation was not, was not that good. No, no. <laughs> Um, but it was not really because of the place, but more of the circumstances mm -hmm. of the whole day. Um, but I'm trying to think. I mean, I, <laughs> I one time I slept <clears throat> in a pizzeria. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I had a warm place and a roof, but it was, uh, yeah, not the best thing ever. <laughs> Uh, it was a bit of a stupid decision to sleep there um, because I forgot to ask the owner uh, like to give me their number or something. And they said, yeah, we will. I will come back in the morning, something like eight or nine o'clock. Mm. And of course, lock the door because, you know, nobody's supposed to get in there. But then I was in there. Everything was locked. You couldn't open any windows because they were like stuck, like super stuck. You couldn't open that. Mm. There was no, no, no option to get out. And I was thinking when I woke up, like that was really stupid because how can you be sure that he will come back? Mm. You can't be sure. And you know nobody there. Like <laughs> you're just stuck in a building and have to trust that he will come back and open the door for you so you can go on. Yeah, yeah. Um, That was not the best decision. And I quickly learned that if you sleep at some other place alone, you always have to get some kind of number information of mm -hmm. somebody. 
um, <clears throat> because that's kind of, yeah, you have to make sure that you can call somebody and at least ask when they will come yeah. or something. Wasn't you afraid uh, that somebody, yeah, doing something with you, uh, of course, it's safety uh, countries, but still. Yeah, of course, that can always happen. But I started with the belief that everything that can happen to me while traveling could happen <clears throat> to me at home too, when I'm just out mm. doing something, you know? <clears throat> so I'm still like it's the same risk, like if I would just live my daily life at home here. So. Sure. And uh, maybe uh, do you have some um, advice for people who are, um afraid of traveling or dream to travel and uh, to doing something like it or, or do you have some advice for, for 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 maybe for young people or for i don't know no mind <laughs> i think the best advice that you can give like to take it slowly do not try to go too fast like try to really enjoy it um even if it's hard sometimes but Just try to enjoy it, everything. Of course, always don't take too much risk at everything. Like, try to be safe. And if you have a bad feeling, then Trust just you. check, make sure that it's really safe. I mean, you can never, like, 100% trust your feeling because something sometimes feels off, but then it's perfectly fine. But just make sure if you have a bad feeling, check if everything's safe and then go on with your life. Try not to stress too much about everything. I think that's the best advice you could give. Mm -hmm. And it, it, if you travel by bike, it gets hard sometimes. <laughs> that's for sure. I think for everyone. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But it's worth. It's worth because you learn from that. And you're really proud of yourself if you mm -hmm. make it. If you have a specific uh, place where you want to be, then... Yeah, of course, happy when you make it, but I found that it's more about, it's so cliche, but it's more about the way that you get there. Because all the experiences that I made with locals, all the nights I slept somewhere, got to know locals, were so much better than just arriving at this place at Nordka. If I would have done this whole trip just to get to Nordka, it, in my eyes, would have been stupid. Because then it's just for that one moment. Of course, that moment is great. You get there. But the way of getting there, like all the experiences, the people, the nature, everything you see and experience, it's so much more. It's, it just gives you so much more than just this one moment. No. Can you so. believe that she's 18? No. She's so wise. <laughs> yeah, wise world. <laughs> so wise I mean, words. Yeah. Yeah. You're not the only ones. <laughs> It, that's something that happened to me actually a lot when I met uh, Lucas and they didn't know my age and asked me. And I had a lot of people that were like quite surprised that just looked at me, stared at me and I said like, what's the matter? And I said, and they said, I didn't think you were 18. I thought you were at least like 20, 21, 22, something like that. Mm. But Oh my gosh, and there were a lot of people that were mm. kind of surprised. All well, this age is different between 18 <laughs> and 20 is huge. <laughs> yeah. If I mean, the old class we, <laughs> you tell, I'm not 18, I thought that maybe uh, 40, but <laughs> 18. Mm. Yeah, if you're younger, it makes a bigger difference. <laughs> But it's uh, you have. Um, I don't know. I think you you have been. You was already very wise, but uh, so happy to see how you, yeah, this the shine in what you have now. It's it's great. So we're enjoying it, mm. and uh, and I hope that uh, everybody um, enjoy your words and um, and even people who uh, go to watch this uh, uh, video after it don't be shy ask questions because i think and yeah and we will ask uh, or will answer the questions so i I, exactly. i think we we go stop because we don't see uh, more questions And then we can um, 
we can it uh, finished and I'm so happy that you uh, came to speak with us and yeah thank you again for inviting me it's really nice speaking with you yeah mm -hmm. and maybe we will see each other on our uh, other road and that yeah. we will travel you never know. faster than we do in our car <laughs> <laughs> well depends but we will see maybe mm. Yes, okay. You never know. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Uh, and we wish you a nice uh, holidays because it's uh, Christmas time. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy it with your family. You're now with your family and it's uh, it's great uh, time to be with family. Mm -hmm. And uh, enjoy it and uh, success, uh, success for you with your study, with your work, what you're doing and... Um, and um, yeah have a nice time thank you and thank you for all the uh, people who, who who were asking questions and watching it and uh, ask uh, questions if you don't dare now ask after it <laughs> yeah we will try to answer every question yeah, yes thank you very much thank you yeah have a nice evening thank you have a good evening bye thank you bye bye, bye.